All right, everybody, welcome back. We have a big video today. We're gonna to finally discuss Eichler Shimura. Okay, so first let's move everything we've been doing to the Jacobian. Let's let K be an algebraically closed field. Let's let X be a smooth projective curve equipped with a correspondence T given by Z phi psi. I'm gonna also denote by T the morphism psi lower star composed phi upper star from last video. That's an endomorphism of the Jacobian of X. If you, if you haven't seen that last video, go ahead and watch that. Okay, what is this as a map on points? Well, it's a map on points from the K points of the Jacobian of X to itself. And it's obtained by taking the correspondence T, which we know is a map from the K points of X to its divisor group. I'm gonna extend T to the divisor group of X, K here on the domain. I'm gonna restrict down to the degree zero divisors on X, the K points of X. And then I'm just gonna pass to divisor classes, which by definition produces a map of the card groups, but the Jacobian is the Picard group. Okay, so that's how you get this map. All right. Okay, so some notation next. We're specifically interested in the case where x is just the modular curve x sub 1 of n and t is the heck of correspondence t sub p. So I'm going to denote by j sub 1 of n the Jacobian of x sub 1 of n. You can easily check this is defined over q basically because x sub 1 of n is, which we harped on for a while. Okay, also remember that I have these diamond automorphisms of X sub one of N denoted diamond of D. Those will induce automorphisms on J sub one of N, um, basically because you'll have like an automorphism from X sub one of N to itself. Then you've got these maps to the Jacobian. Okay, and this diagram commutes. Okay, so this is always how think things that happen on the level of curves will, will generally extend to the Jacobians. Okay. Those automorphisms, the extensions of those automorphisms to J sub one of N, I'm also going to just call those diamond of D. All right. Finally, just kind of a, a, a technical point lurking in the background to make most of what we're about to say actually make sense. If L is a prime and N is a natural number, it's easy to check that the endomorphisms of J sub one of N act on the abelian group given by the L to the little N torsion of J sub one of N. In other words, these endomorphisms, they'll take torsion to torsion. Okay. And since J sub one of N is a Q variety, which we just got done discussing, the absolute Galois group of Q also acts on J sub one of N, or, or, sorry, act, also acts on the LDN torsion of J sub one of N. Okay. Sort of like how the Galois group acts on the, the torsion of elliptic curves, similar idea. Okay. So we're going to need to be aware of a Goose's theorem because this is used throughout the proof of Eichler Shimura. Uh, so I'll give you just kind of the relevant part of a Goose's theorem that we need. Let's let n and n, and let's let p be a prime that doesn't divide n. It turns out then x sub one of n, the modular curve, has good reduction at p for all those primes p. And I won't go through the proof of this. Uh, I'll give you a reference here. The Kronikarian model of fields of elliptic modular functions by Gusa. Although I've read this paper, you do need to also read another paper of a GUSA that's found in the references of this paper. And I would recommend reading that before you even bother reading this. Um, I'll let you check that paper out and you'll see exactly which paper I'm talking about. Okay, so now we're ready to state kind of a weak version of Eichler Shimura, although this is maybe as enlightening as and, and detailed as we need to be with Eichler Shimura, but I'm going to give you more details on what I'll call quote unquote full Eichler Shimura right after this. Okay, so theorem four, weak Eichler Shimura. So let's let P be a prime and let's let frac P be a prime in Q bar lying over P. And let's let sigma sub frac P be a Frobenius element at frac P in the absolute Galois group of Q. Then if L is a prime, which isn't P, and if N is in a natural number, then as elements of endomorphisms on the L to the N torsion of J sub one of N, the HECA operator or the HECA correspondence T sub P, if you like, is the same thing as Frobenius at frac P plus P diamond of P times sigma sub frac P inverse. So this is akin to what happened moduli theoretically over C, if you remember from a couple of videos ago. It looks like the same thing is actually working on the Jacobians and it's even working on torsion. Okay, so references for this, just see CSS chapter three, Diamond and Sherman chapter eight. I'm gonna give you now some much more insight as to what's going on here, even though this version of eichler schmore is all we'll really need. Okay, so some details and comments on the full eichler schmore although I put full in quotes because I believe there are more general versions of eichler schmore even than what I'm gonna give you here, but. Okay, so first of all, results found in a Goose's paper, 
in Deline Rappaport and Drinfeld's elliptic modules and Katz Mazur's arithmetic moduli of elliptic curves, which I'll call KM from here on out. You take a bunch of these results from these works and you combine them and you see that you can use the moduli interpretation of modular curves to actually construct canonical proper models for modular curves no, x sub gamma over spec z. So you can even do better than just constructing things over q, in other words. You can even construct things over c. And what is gamma here? It's just any congruent subgroup living between gamma sub 1 of n and gamma sub 0 of n. Okay, typically it will just be either gamma sub 0 of n or gamma sub 1 of n. And so what this means, since I have these canonical proper models for modular curves over z, I can discuss their reductions, the reduction of x sub gamma over fp for p a prime. That makes sense now. Now, we just got done talking about this, this curve. Okay, this canonical proper model over Z has good reduction at primes P not dividing N, that's Goose's work. And as you might expect, but of course you have to prove this, the non-cuspidal points of the reduction, so take X sub gamma and reduce it mod P, which makes sense now. The non-cuspidal points of that reduction correspond to elliptic curves over FP bar with gamma structure, just like you would think that they would, okay? So diamond M sections eight and nine, Okay, for more details, uh, that, that's a, in fact, diamond M is gonna be a great reference for everything I'm about to say. And not only is diamond M kind of a, a good reference for this discussion, but it provides a lot more references in, inside of it. Okay, so let's keep going. Now, the Jacobians J sub gamma of these curves, X sub gamma, okay, they can also be viewed over Q basically because everything else can be viewed over Q like X sub gamma. Uh, so we can talk about the neuron model, J sub gamma slash Z of J sub gamma over spec Z. Just think of, uh, we'll talk about neuron models later. For right now, just think of J, just think of the neuron model as a special model of J sub gamma that lives over Z instead of just over Q. And it has nice mapping properties. And it just think of it as a very special model that has all the properties that we're gonna need it to have throughout the rest of this discussion, okay. Now, once you've defined J sub gamma slash Z, you can use base change to define J sub gamma slash A for arbitrary rings A. So what you have is, um, I don't know, so you'll have like spec Z, you'll have spec A, where A is any ring mapping to spec Z. What is this map here? Well, just take some ring and look at some ring map Z to A and then take the induced map on spectra going in the opposite direction. Okay. You've got your Jacobian up here. Uh, what do they call it? J sub gamma over Z. Okay, it's a it's a spec Z model, so there's a, a structure map from it to spec Z. And then if you complete this diagram by taking Cartesian product, that's going to be that's going to be what I mean when I say we can use base change to define Jacobians over arbitrary rings A with respect to these congruent subgroups. Okay, so in particular, I, I can choose A to be like FP, right? So I can discuss basically J sub gamma over FP, the reduction of the Jacobian mod P. Now, if P doesn't divide the level of gamma, which is usually called capital N, then this reduction of the Jacobian uh, with respect to gamma mod P can actually be identified with the Jacobian of X sub gamma over FP. See, what this is saying, you might expect this to be true, but it's, it's non-trivial. If P doesn't divide the level of the congruent subgroup, there are two things you can do, right? So first, you can take the reduction of your modular curve, mod P, and then take its Jacobian. But the second thing you could do is you could take the reduction of its Jacobian mod P, and you could compare the two. Well, it turns out they're the same, okay? So diamond and M, again, section 10, also mazur wiles class fields of abelian extensions of Q, very relevant references. Okay, so everything's kind of matching up like we needed to. Now that we're about to, in a few sections here, think of heck correspondences as heck operators. They're gonna, and these operators will be thought of as endomorphisms on weight k cusp forms of level n. Okay. This discussion will come from the moduli interpretation of the heck correspondences over C that we've already talked about over the past few videos. Now, it turns out these operators arise from a correspondence that's actually defined over Q, not just C. And these will give rise to an endomorphism of J sub gamma, which is also defined over Q. Okay, I mean, that shouldn't surprise you because we already have the heck correspondence basically has, as an action on the modular curve. So of course it's gonna extend to the Jacobian. Okay, now, because these 
PECA operators give rise to anamorphisms over Q of J sub gamma, they're also going to give rise to anamorphisms of the neuron models J sub gamma slash Z. Okay. And so it's going to be natural to consider HECA operators as anamorphisms on the reduction of the Jacobian mod P. You see, because the second they're anamorphisms of J sub gamma slash Z, I can ask, all right, well, I can reduce this model mod P. And I can certainly look at the HECA action on that reduced Jacobian. What does it look like? Okay. If P doesn't divide N, or just recall from the above, I've already seen I can identify this reduction, the reduction of this mod P with the Jacobian of the reduced modular curve mod P. Okay. Now, what's crucial is, remember, we have this moduli interpretation of the HECA operators. It turns out this remains valid mod P. I mean, everything's just falling into place here, piece by piece. What I mean is, the resulting endomorphisms T sub N, we'll call them, on the reduced Jacobian mod P are induced by maps on divisors, satisfying for all ordinary elliptic curves A with gamma structure, T sub N of A is the sum over I of I of A. What is the sum over? It's the sum over all cyclic isogenies of degree N. This is exactly the divisor theoretic theory of the ordinary heck corresponses we already discussed in previous videos. This is exactly what happened when we weren't working mod P. Okay, HECA correspondences were given by sums of images of elliptic curves uh, under certain isogenies with like, uh, what was it, with prime order kernel or something? Well, I'm just replacing a prime P by, by an integer N and I'm getting the exact same phenomenon happening here. So again, diamond M section 10 is a great place to look at this. All right, so what's happening here is because the moduli interpretation of the HECA correspondences remains valid mod P, Okay, I can analyze the HECA operators T sub P over FP as long as P isn't dividing M. Okay. Now, from, for the rest of the discussion, let me specify to gamma equals gamma sub one of N, just for simplicity. Now, if X is an FP bar variety, let phi sub X be the Frobenius morphism on X. This is just raising coordinates to the P power like you think it would be. Okay. Uh, you know, for example, if, if E comma P corresponds to a point on the reduction of X sub one of N mod P, then phi sub e, the Frobenius on e, because e is an elliptic curve and I can apply, it has its own Frobenius, right? That's an isogeny of degree p from e p, of course, to e infinity p infinity, I'll call it, which is just by definition, the image of e p under the Frobenius on x sub one of n. Okay, I'm kind of saying the same thing in two different ways there. That's what's going on here. Okay, now the graph of Frobenius on x sub one of n in the cross product of X sub one of N with itself over FP is then a correspondence of degree P, which we'll label F, F for Frobenius. Let's let F prime be its transpose. And by transpose, I mean swap the coordinates in F to produce F prime, right? So I've got this correspondent, I've got this graph here. So swap coordinates, that gives me F prime. Now, the endomorphism F of J sub gamma, remember, so right now F is a correspondence on X sub one of N, it's going to be a correspondence on J sub gamma just by extending to the Jacobian. Okay, so this is induced by F. This is this turns out to be the Frobenius endomorphism phi sub J sub gamma. Okay. And F prime is the dual endomorphism in the sense of dual morphisms from the theory of abelian varieties. We talked about dual morphisms to isogenies of elliptic curves, but all that theory extends more generally to abelian varieties. So, so basically I've got this map J gamma J gamma given by Frobenius. Okay, and then I've got a dual map going the other way given by F prime. This is the transpose of Frobenius. Okay. Um, okay, so continued. So let's do this. So we've got our random point E comma P, which if you recall, I, I wrote it up here. It's just a point on the reduction of X sub one of N mod P. That's all it is. So I can, I can say, all right, well, let's apply F prime to this point. What should I expect? Well, F prime is a correspondence from let's say X sub one of N FP to its divisor group, remember, because our correspondence can be thought of as maps from the curve to its divisor group. So what is its image? Well, it's some divisor, right? It's some divisor consisting of formal points in X sub one of N mod P. So let's just call that divisor E sub one, P sub one, plus blah, 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 E sub P, P sub P. There will be P points here, basically, because Frobenius is a degree P map, okay? Okay, and what are these? These E sub I, P sub I, they're just elliptic curves with gamma structure and characteristic P. Again, I mean, th that's very simple. You're just 
again, like F prime is just a map from X sub one of N mod P to its divisor group is what's going on here. So I'll write that. So you should expect the image of EP to be a divisor that looks like a sum of a formal sum of elliptic curves with gamma structure and characteristic P. So we'll just label those points. We know how many there are because of the degree of Frobenius. Now, of course, like, so for each of these elliptic curves E sub I, there's a Frobenius map, which we'll call phi sub E sub I. This is an isogeny from of degree P from E sub I, P sub I to EP. It just goes the other way, right? Um, and so, because it's a degree P isogeny by the theory of dual isogenies, there'll be a dual isogeny going the other way. So I've got a degree P isogeny from EIPI to EP, right? So by the theory of dual isogenies, there should be a map going the other way. So from E to EI, and where should it send P? It should send it to P, P sub I, because the degree of the isogeny is P. Okay, so C Silverman one for this. All right. Now, if E is ordinary at P, which, mean, which means the, if you take E mod P and you look at the P torsion, there actually is non-trivial P torsion. P torsion will be isomorphic to Z mod PZ. It turns out the points E infinity, P infinity, so that was the image of EP under Frobenius, and then the images of all of these guys under this, the dual to Frobenius that we just got done discussing. So E sub one, P, P sub one through E sub P, P, P sub P. These form a complete list of the distinct curves with gamma structure, which are P isogenous to EP. There are no others. Okay, so in other words, there are no other images of EP under degree P isogenies other than these. The one we get from Frobenius and then the ones we get from, these, from this divisor up here, from the dual of Frobenius. Okay, so, so I mean, another way of saying all this, the upshot is as an equality of divisors on X sub one of N mod P, we have the following. Uh, T sub P applied to EP is the same as E infinity P infinity plus E1 P P sub one plus blah, blah, blah E P P sub P. And so what we find is that T sub P applied to a random kind of E comma P where E is ordinary is just the same thing as applying Frobenius plus diamond of P Frobenius dual to E sub P. Okay, in other words, like I can even rephrase this again. What I'm saying is that F plus diamond P F prime is the same thing as TP on ordinary points in X sub one of NFP. But you see, you can prove that ordinary points are dense in X sub one of NFP. And so you can actually deduce that the HECA correspondence T sub P is the same thing as F plus diamond P F prime as endomorphisms on all of J sub one of NFP. Okay, so you can move all the way up to the Jacobian. And it's this equality here that is the full eichler shimura What this is saying is if P doesn't divide N, the HECA operator TP viewed as an endomorphism of the reduction of J sub gamma mod P satisfies T sub P equals Frobenius plus diamond of P Frobenius dual, okay? And so this should remind you of a result that we had in the complex moduli theoretics setup a few videos ago. We proved a similar equality help. It's in my video called A Bridge to eichler shimura So if you don't remember anything else about eichler shimura just remember that it's trying to describe heck correspondences mod P and it's trying to do so in a very nice land, the land of Jacobians, okay? So again, just I'll end with a quick list of references. Uh, Darman Diamond Taylor's Notes on Fermat's Last Theorem has a good discussion on this. Diamond Sherman, Shimura's book, Agusa, and Diamond and M, okay? And so we won't immediately use this theorem, but this theorem is gonna allow us to gain more insight into the notion of modularity. It's gonna allow us to prove various things about Galois representations attached to cusp forms. It pops up all over the place. And I'll try to show you a couple of those proofs as they come, come to us. Okay, and so thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.